Now let's get into watching how the, the use of the trading system and trade entry operates. Here we're tracking the US Canadian dollar on an M5 chart. I have the settings set to 12 pips from the trigger line. So when we get a trigger line to go long or short, our trigger line would then be 12 pips away from the bar closing price, or we would set our buy stop to be a buyer or sell stop to be a seller. Now we are getting some lift in price, looking to see if we transition momentum from downside to upside and get a long entry. There we have the trigger. Our trigger line that's yellow means pending. It hasn't been activated. Price touched it. So any buy stop we had on that line has been activated and we would locate our stop where the red line is and our initial target or minimum target would be at the green line which is 2 to 1. 30 pip target for a 15 pip stop. So market had some initial lift after our entry, slight pullback. We're on a lower time frame chart so we don't need wide stops. And now we're picking up additional pulse of momentum. And we've hit a first target. Now the suggested stop line has moved up to lock in some profits. Prices skyrocketed up towards our next our, our next target line, like the suggested next target, if you're carrying additional positions, is plotted. So not only did our stop line move up, meaning you should probably put a stop here or lower. That would be the highest level you'd want to put a stop uh, after the initial target area was hit. Then it has the second suggested target that's just been hit. So if you did one scale out and a second scale out, you can see the stop lines moved up. So you'd never, the, the stop line moves up 15 pips at a time because we have 15 pips of risk. But the target line, which was in, initially set at 30 pips above our fill price, jumps up 30 pips at a time. So literally, we're going for a two to one target then it jumps up to a four to one target, then it would jump up to a six to one target. So if you wanted to, I mean, you could be in your original entry and still letting the trade run. Just keeping your stop somewhere at uh, the stop line, the, the red horizontal line, you know, that, that's like a suggested area to move your stop up as you're following price. Now this is an important point. Anytime I see a market push, pull back, and then come back up to retest that prior pivot, I, I always watch these areas. So that was the first pivot. It's pushing. I want to see price break out and run, or I want to see price, you know, if it's going to roll over here if it fails. So this, this current stop line is a little higher than I would use. I would tend to have my stop down near the most recent pivot if I have runners on. Now, if I want to have a top tight stop and I've already hit an initial target and I want to have a close stop on my last runners, I don't want to give, a, give them a lot of room to breathe, I could leave that stop at that stop line. And so far we have not had price go down and press that line. It's gotten close, but no press through. Now, this horizontal red line that I have drawn, that's about where I'd have my stop. Now that price is lifting through the prior pivot, I would take my stop that was down in the last pullback pivot and I would raise it up a bit. Now price is starting to go sideways. It's either going to run up or it's going to roll over. I'm going to lock in as much profit as I can on any runners. Okay, now we had a, a micro pullback pivot and it's pushing again. I'm going to move my stop up again. So this green line is the next suggested target area. So in my case, I would have been stopped out right here. If somebody was following the stop line suggestion for the system, they're still in the trade with any runners. So I would have done pretty good on my trade. If you're still in this trade, you're doing fantastic. So I always like to use these pullback pivots and uptrends as areas to put my stop. 
but we do incorporate a suggested stop line for you. You know, where where is the highest level you'd ever place your stop as your following price? So at that level or below is perfectly fine. And then the next time is we keep giving you the new next target area where you should be focused on to exit any runners. So if you were still in this trade with runners that have not yet been stopped out, you know, you've locked in a lot of profit on this trade, well over two to one. Now I am watching momentum starting to dissipate a bit. So any last pushes to the upside are a gift. And re remember, we're on the five minute chart here. We're not trading three day long trades. You know, we're trying to get a good hit out of a pulse of momentum and any runners. There we go. We get another press higher so that the target jumps up. I think the target's now up to six to one or eight to one because of the move. You know, this market just keeps grinding up. And now we finally go down, go through the stop line and it changes to blue. So look how simple we give you visual reference points that run with the trade to help you manage where to have your next targets, where to have your stops. And then once you do get stopped out following the suggested reference lines, when to go flat on the trade and be done with the trade and wait for new setups. So hopefully you can see we've designed this so you can be paying attention to momentum here on the FX pulse indicator. So it can help you, you know, as a market's grinding higher and you're long, you know, where do I get out? Where do I get out? And, and you want to stay in trades that are running in your intended direction as much as you can. But when you start seeing divergences building where price is grinding, grinding higher, and the uh, FX pulse indicator, or the pulse indicator is continuing to go lower, don't be surprised to see some pullback in that uptrend. You know, it's not uncommon to see a pullback before you get maybe another leg higher. So we're on a five minute chart, so this would be considered scalping. We get on a 30 minute chart or a one hour chart, that would be intraday position trading to multi-day position trading. But you can see right here, price not making any new high pivots as yet, cycling sideways and momentum is dissipating. If anybody was still in the trade, you know, you're getting a lot of evidence to just go flat, call it good, and you got an excellent, you, you caught the bulk of the pulse of momentum that came into price. So there you have it. If you have any questions on this, just let us know. But I wanted to give you a clear run through and kind of a live conditions type look of how all the mechanisms to the pulse indicator works.